Well, I grew up fishing with my dad and with my Nana, and it's something that I've always done as a kid and what I love to do now as an adult. Today we're gonna go try our luck at a local lake for some catfish and some brim, and then come back and make some fried catfish tacos. Since I'm trying to catch catfish and bass today, I'm gonna use like a medium size hook. This one. Thread it through your hole, twist it about six or eight times, put it through this hook in, and then back through the hole that you just made. Tighten it, use your tackle box and tighten it this way, and then you're good to go. That thing is not gonna break unless you're catching a 10 pounder. I grew up fishing with my dad and with my grandpa. I learned how to bait a hook about the same time that I learned how to talk and walk. It's so fun now that I'm able to take what I learned and what I've always loved doing and apply it to cooking and in my life now. Catfish is like that epitome of the southern fish and it's what I grew up eating. We'll see if we'll catch some today. Catfish are bottom feeders and so you want your line to kind of go at the bottom of the lake or the pond that you're fishing in. I have to put a weight so that whenever I cast it, my cast will go further and my hook will sink down to the bottom. For catfish, I like to use worms and hot dogs. People also like to do chicken livers. Comment and tell me what your favorite bait to fish for catfish is. Maybe I'll try it next time. I feel like I might be getting a bite. Oh, yeah. It stole my bait! <laughs> I have actually always had better luck with hot dogs. When you get your hot dog, you just break off a little bit, enough that the catfish will want to bite. When I was little, my dad and I used to go on a little John boat, and the general fishing food was Vienna sausages out of a can, which now I'm very ashamed to admit that I used to eat when I was little. Um, so I feel like hot dogs are a little bit of a step up from the Vienna sausages. My dad always told me that if I'm not catching any fish, I'm not holding my mouth the right way. When I was little, I used to like sit there and stick my tongue out one way or make sure I stood on one foot or put my hand in the air because about 80% of it is luck. So it's so hot today and I haven't had a whole lot of luck, but that's okay. So I'm going to run by my local fishmonger and pick up some locally farm-raised catfish that we're gonna fry up for catfish tacos. So I'll see you in my kitchen. So I have these catfish that have been marinating for a few hours in buttermilk and some hot sauce. We are going to mix our dredging mixture, which has a third cup of masa harina or corn flour. And then I'm also going to use a third cup of the medium ground cornmeal. The cornmeal is really what's going to help make the fish super, super crispy. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of flour to this mixture. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder and then some cayenne pepper. This seems like a lot, but I like a lot of heat in my food. And then some good old salt and pepper. Now I'm just gonna take my fork and whisk all this up. Fried catfish is one of those things that is just kind of comfort food and good for the soul. That crispy fish is just something that you, you'll always remember for your whole life. Whenever I'm frying, I like to get my oil temperature up. It's right at about 380 right now, and I'm gonna drop it in, and as soon as the fish go in, the temperature's gonna drop and get me right where I wanna be, between 350 and 375. We're gonna fry these for about three to four minutes until the fish is done on the inside and super crispy on the outside. I'm frying my catfish up in peanut oil, which I think has a little bit higher of a smoke point than canola oil or definitely olive oil or vegetable oil. Whatever your favorite oil to fry in is a fine substitute for peanut oil if you have a peanut allergy. Another hard thing about frying that you need to remember is to make sure that you get your oil back up to temperature in between batches so that your second batch is just as crispy as your first. What do you guys think? Did I do a good job? Super crispy. I love that cornmeal batter on this fried fish. So I've got some slaw mix, and the recipe calls for shredding your own cabbage and cutting up all of your vegetables, but I like to save time by buying pre-shredded slaw mix. And then some finely chopped pineapple that we're gonna mix into our slaw for our spicy pineapple slaw to go on our tacos. So I'm gonna start just by juicing a few limes. And I'm gonna do the juice of two limes, but the zest of only one. This is my favorite kitchen tool, a microplane. Honestly, like I carry one of these in my car with me and I have three at my house. All different colors because I gotta have a little bit of pop of color in everything that I do. Please put in the comments what your favorite thing, what you can't live without in your kitchen. So I'm gonna get a little bit of juice from this lime and just a little bit of lemon juice. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of honey, salt and pepper. It's really important to kind of mix your honey in well with your whisk. Now I'm gonna mix in my olive oil into my vinaigrette. This is about a third cup of olive oil. You don't wanna put too much in your vinaigrette. I have my bowl of pre-shredded cabbage slaw mix here that I picked up at my grocery store. And into this mix, I'm going to put in some chopped pineapple. And then I've got some thinly sliced radishes that didn't already come in my slaw mix. A little bit of cilantro. I think I have a couple of jalapenos ready in my garden. So let's go out there and grab a few. I grew up doing gardens all the time with my dad. In my garden today, I have jalapenos. These are gonna be perfect for that spicy pineapple slaw. I'm chopping these pretty fine, just because you don't wanna take a huge chunk of jalapeno, even though I do like a lot of heat. I don't want a big, large bite of jalapeno in my slaw. This is a Fresno pepper. It's a little bit hotter than a jalapeno. So I'm gonna slice this with the seeds and everything and use them as a garnish for my slaw. I'm going to toss my vinaigrette in with my slaw. This slaw is just as tasty as it is pretty. The purple cabbage and the orange carrots and the green cabbage, and then the little pink from the radishes and the yellow pineapple, it makes for a beautiful slaw and it's also super tasty. So this is gonna look amazing on top of our fried catfish tacos. All right, let's assemble these tacos. We've got our warm charred tortillas. This mixture is equal parts sour cream and mayonnaise, which I think gives the perfect creaminess to the crispy tacos and the acidic spicy slaw. And we'll top it with this super crispy fish. A little bit of salt on the fish. We're gonna top our catfish with a little bit of the spicy slaw. And then we're gonna garnish it with our fresh jalapenos and Fresno pepper and some sliced radishes. And then for a little bit more heat, my favorite hot sauce, Miss Cholula. To top it off, a little bit of fresh cilantro. All right, y'all, these are some crispy catfish tacos with a spicy pineapple slaw. These are gonna be so perfect with this vino verde. Cheers, y'all.